Okay, so right here at T minus 44 seconds, I, had, I must have uh, been off on my time a little bit. It's sweep timer mode is kicked in and it's knocking it down. You can see. Uh, so it's giving me just dashes here, dashes here, and occasionally flashing the actual temperature. So it's bringing the temperature down and the uh, air volumes all the way up. So I kind of like this. This is this is nice. So it has some nice automatic features. Either when you hit it off, hit the function key off, and it will say off, and it'll rapidly cool down the gun. Or in this five-minute timer mode, and it'll go ahead and uh, knock the, you know, kick the air volume up, cool down the gun, and shut itself off. Well, we hope. I'm assuming it will. So this is kind of a nice thing to have with these uh, digital controls. I'm not so sure the the uh, the other ones with the little dials and uh, knobs, if it had the sleep timer mode function, maybe it did, um, in which case I apologize, but uh, digital readouts are always a little, a little nicer. You get presumably an accurate reading or at least something you can memorize and go with. And even if the temperature is off a little bit, you can say, well, okay, maybe 450 or 430 or 480 is where I need to be to get an effective uh, desoldering. So it's coming down 192. I think it was 170 something before when it kicked off. Okay, so yeah, it said 179. So it shut itself off now. And um, so that's it. That part of it works. Okay, so what I've done is attached a uh, extender tube onto my uh, DSLR here. So that's why it's got a very near field focus looking uh, effect going on. And what I'm going to do is attempt uh, and try desoldering this guy and then one of these. And uh, uh, oh, well, you can't see it, but probably um, one of the, these bad boys over here one of these so let's get this frame back in position okay I'm setting the uh, air temperature to about 750, which I'm not experienced, so this may be a little hot. Uh, we'll see. get flowing right away. Let's try this other approach here. Okay, that's off. Sorry if I'm moving the board around on you. Not my intention. <clears throat> I could try securing it down with some tape. Let's give that a shot. Let's see if we can do this live, folks. Let's find my tape. Securing the door. 
pinners tape to the circuit board. See if we can try this again. Get one of these big gnarly diodes right here. This is a big boy. Uh, hit both sides evenly. And there it goes. Wow, that came off easy. I'd have been there with a a long time with a soldering iron trying to do that. This is all uh, lead-free solder, by the way. Uh, if any of you know what lead-free solder is like, when you try to desolder anything, it takes a long time. So, let's see what we can do with this IC chip. Yeah, I can see it. See it flowing. And there it is. Got that little IC chip right off. Look at that. So, right, let's give a shot to one of these little chips over here. These little chip components. My airflow is, seems awfully high. I'm going to lower it a little bit. And uh, lowering the airflow should uh, be uh, okay. So, not that you can see right now, but uh, what I'm telling you is the uh, the tip of the the gun is staying at 750. It lowered itself down. Oh my goodness! That might be a little too hot for uh, that. Came off right quick. Let's lower the temperature a little bit. Take it down to 700. You know, wait for the gun to uh, actually read 700 on the readout. Okay, and it's already there. So, oops, sorry. I hope I'm not getting my hand in the way of everything when I'm doing this. Okay, so I'm checking the viewfinder as I do this, folks. So, sorry. Alright, let's try this other component. Just some little chip components. Yeah, no sweat. Right off. Look at that. You know what a bugger these things are to get off, don't you? Anyone who's ever tried to do this. Well, let's. Okay, folks, I apologize. The uh, DSLR ran out of time. Uh, I only have 12 minutes of record time each time, so um, I did get it off. I didn't know that the camera had stopped recording, so here's the chip, and that's the side that came off, and here's the circuit board side. So, um, yeah, it did pull it off. Not the neatest job, but. Uh, had I had the right flow tip for the this type of chip, then it probably would have done a much better job. Okay, so in conclusion, the um, the Sawayu, uh 852A++ Pro with the digital controls and digital readouts, I think it works pretty good. It was able to get off this chip pretty impressive along with uh, one of these little guys this is a memory chip that was on the same board little diode surface mount diode another little uh, IC chip 
all these came off in just a few seconds using this. This chip would have come off far easier if I had the, uh, the right flow tip that you can get for these, which I'll probably be getting. Um, and But just to prove the point that it is capable of doing it, you just had to have the temperature up to 850 degrees and maximum airflow uh, to get that off. So, but yeah, it does the job. And um, it's quick to get up to temperature. And uh, I like it. So, you know, what can I say? I'm not going to bash it just because it's uh, from China. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than the Hako. Although I'm sure I would probably be a little happier with a Hako. I also don't have $1,500 to blow on one of them. This was $132 through Amazon. So, you do the math. So anyway, uh, that's my review, my unboxing, and uh, overall setup and use of this Hawaii Airflow. So, thumbs up Hawaii. So far, I like it. So, this is Joe from iRepair Electronics, and thanks for watching.